I'm Kendalo. I came from Japan for this conference to talk about uh, semantic search in a practical setting. Um, yeah, let me share about me. Um, I'm working for Medically as a search relevance engineer. Um, Medically is one of Japan's largest marketplace platforms where users can buy and sell their items. So um, our task setting is not exactly the same, but quite similar to product search like Amazon. So I noticed that the attendees have different backgrounds. So to better understand uh, what problem I'm tackling, let me uh, briefly share uh, how Lexical product search works. So um, for any search applications, uh, we first created an embedded index to map each term to docs. And then uh, the task of question answering is to retrieve the doc that satisfies the central aspect of the query. So for example, when we ask uh, what are unsecured loans, the document should explain what unsecured loans are. Well, you know, it's a bit different in product search. So its query term acts as a filter condition, and the users expect the product to satisfy all the given requirements. So while you know, in question answering, we don't really care about term overlap, while in um, product search, we, you know, uh, the relevance is defined as how well the item satisfies the given specifications. So in the sense, so take this as an example. So for the given query, uh, Nike shoes, um, items in the intersection of both uh, filter conditions are considered exact, while if the item uh, partially satisfies the uh, specifications, it's considered substitute, and uh, other random items are irrelevant. So recently, there are many research papers or articles that claims how great their proposed methods are compared to poor BIM25. And some people are discussing whether uh, lexical search can be replaced by um, semantic search. So why people don't like um, lexical search? And, and what's wrong with um, traditional search? And of course, there are many challenges like uh, fragility to spelling variants, uh, linguistic ambiguity, and uh, lack of understanding of semantic relationships. But you know, these are well-known issues, and the solutions do exist. Like, for example, for the, uh, the first one, we have a stemmer, and for the second one, we have a spelling collector, and also we have a, a synonym expansion. So what's wrong with it? So even for more complex queries like this, uh, query cat tower for cats with low mobility, so the, I guess the user is looking for a cat tower that features low platforms, gradual steps, and a soft surface. And the, you know, hidden uh, requirements don't appear in the query text, but even for this, uh, you know, complex queries, we can, you know, introduce uh, attribute gener generation and also uh, query classification. So what's the problem? So as a result, modern lexical search systems are becoming increasingly complex, like uh, it consists of many subcomponents and the heuristics. So yeah, we have many components like a tokenizer with um, many dictionaries and ontology classifier. And we designed the, um, our relevance function on, on top of this using uh, field weights and boosting functions. And each component requires specialized expertise, making it costly to maintain. So why this is so uh, complex? Because you know, this, the system uh, can be optimized directly because the index is not differentiable. So we need to add more components to address you know, different complex problems. And, uh, uh, but the challenge uh, uh, lies in how to measure the effectiveness of the subcomponents. And also, uh, I often feel if I'm working on the right problem and our you know, metrics are correlated enough with online business metrics. So on the other hand, semantic search, the architecture could be much simpler because the idea is to, is to just have a by encoder that encodes uh, documents and queries. And uh, what we need to do is to just provide the expected input and the corresponding uh, ideal output. And uh, the weights of the model is updated automatically uh, you know, based on the loss. So this way, uh, it changes the approach we are uh, doing, so from you know, addressing subproblems to directly optimizing the system. 
which could be you know, much simpler, cheaper, and more effective. So you know, this is what it said in the literature, but, but I wonder if it's you know, really that straightforward. So um, through this presentation, I'd like to explore these questions. Is semantic search a hype? And then how can we incorporate semantic matching signals? And finally, I'd like to discuss if semantic search is really cost effective. So yeah, now let's compare two different paradigms. So yeah, there are many research papers, but I think uh, public benchmark results may not be entirely reliable because you know, their experiments are not designed for your domain and for your application. So you know, you know, um, a data set, task setting, uh, evaluation metrics, and the implementation um, you know, may significantly differ from what you want. So you need to verify the effectiveness of the, uh, you know, the proposed approach yourself. So um, there are many publicly available data sets for various applications, like uh, for product search, question answering, uh, into retrieval. And each data set has different characteristics. And as I'm working on product search, I'm going to use uh, Amazon ESCI data set for this presentation. And also, it may be good as uh, you know, uh, it's not easy for everyone to understand Japanese examples. So yeah, this uh, data set, of course, has English uh, products. So <laughs> I think I don't have much time. So I don't uh, go deeper into the details, as you know, this data set is mentioned several times in this conference. But basically, it contains product information and the grade labels. So I'd like to first discuss you know, what we need to do first is to choose appropriate metrics. And the appropriate metrics here is the metrics correlated well with online metrics. So in the paper I introduced, um, they are using MMR10 and also NDCDR10. So I'd like to discuss if this makes sense for product search. So why? So rank-based metrics are the metrics that emphasize the top heaviness uh, based on the assumption that the gain decay from the top to bottom the value of the, uh, relevant items at first position should be much greater than the one at 50s. So I visualize the uh, click position distribution. So it shows that how you know, user attention decays from top. So it makes sense to use you know, some uh, rank based metric here. So in this case, what rank based metric, metric we use. So well, um, as it's common to incorporate uh, different levels of relevance. Like, for example, in our case, a purchase is the most strong signal compared to other uh, events like a like and a click. Uh, so we want to you know, incorporate this assumption into our metrics, so it's naturally to adapt NDCZ. And also, MLL is the one often used uh, in offline evaluation, but it's not suitable. So MLL uh, takes the first relevant items into account and ignores the rest of the items in the list. So what it happens is that, uh, look at this example. If we adapt MLL, the left example is much better. But actually, what we want to do, what we want to achieve is the right example. So in that case, MLL is not suitable. So also, so now we have a rank based metric, but is it sufficient? And also, look at this example. So now, you know, both NDCZ is uh, are almost the same, but uh, there is a huge gap in precision. And the uh, product search, because of nature, it requires high precision. So we also need to um, need a set metric like precision. And also, we have a scenario where we actually don't have a um, appropriate item to show in our inventory for a specific query. So in that case, we want to, we don't want to, you know, show random items, and or, or rather, we want to, you know, uh, suggest users try different queries, or you know, uh, we want to show similar items or stuff like that. So the interpretation is like this. So, you know, higher NDCZ is always better, but uh, you know, precision, high precision is a requirement for us, and we found that the NDCZ has a positive correlation with revenue while you know, precision has a negative correlation with the number of complaints from users. So in summary, so MLL is not appropriate. And also, small k is insufficient because users examine many items to find and purchase a better product at the lowest price. 
And also, we can't rely solely on MDCG, but precision matters a lot. So now let's talk about the implementation. So in the literature, um, you know, they compare uh, their fine-tuned uh, semantic search model with barely optimized for BM25. But you know, the reality is opposite. So what you are going to do is to compare your newborn dense retrieval model with uh, you know, already established such system that has been optimized over years, so which serves as a you know, formidable baseline, which is tough to beat. So to conduct this um, comparison, I implemented a naive lexical search system and then applied different techniques to uh, optimize the system. And uh, after applying uh, multiple techniques, uh, and this is uh, improved dramatically. And also, uh, I mentioned that the semantic search is simpler, but however, there are a few things to consider, like uh, you know, what sampling strategy we apply or which fail to encode, uh, what uh, we train the model to use with pitch loss. So I also fine-tuned the uh, semantic search model, and also you know, NCC improved. So um, here are the combined results. So you can see that if both systems are not fine-tuned, semantic search perform better in MDCG, while if both systems are fine-tuned, they show, achieve the almost the same MDCG. And uh, another notable thing is, you know, the precision of semantic search is significantly low. And uh, as I explained, low precision is not acceptable in production, so we can't use semantic search directly in our system. So it seems semantic search is not that as great as it's claimed to be, but uh, this result is not surprising because in product search, queries are often given as a set of keywords, and the users copy and paste product names. So, and also, we recently conducted a user survey asking when do you use the platform, and the, the majority responded when searching for a specific item to buy. So queries often look like product space, attributed space, and so on. So now I'm wondering the differences between them. So you know both achieve the almost the same NDCZ, but you know they should be, there are some differences between them. So I tried to quantify the uh, number of items found in both uh, systems. So I you know sent two requests to both systems and then count the uh, the same document. In this example, document one and three are found in both uh, systems, so the count is three. And I sent uh, repeated this process for all the queries in the test set, and 28.6 documents are found in both systems on average. So you know, in terms of NDCG, they are the same, but uh, you know, they retrieve different products. So what is this difference? So I checked the result one by one and uh, found that the lexical search tend to perform better for queries that expect exact matches like a you know, book title or model name, or queries that contains attributes that users expect uh, exact matching, while um, semantic search tend to perform better for queries that are more complex or linguistically challenging, like uh, you know, uh, it contains ambiguous term or natural language queries, like I want a long jacket that comes to me like blah, blah, blah. So this is the query actually contained in the test set, and, uh, well, of course, uh, Lexical Search can perform, can't perform better for such queries. So I wanted to quantify the, what I found. So I measured the uh, uh, performance by query type, and it shows that the Lexical Search performed better for short queries, while you know, Semantic Search uh, performed better in you know, more complex, you know, long uh, queries, uh, like in this big uh, table. So, you know, the, the fact itself is interesting, but also it indicates that the results are greatly affected by the uh, proportion of the query type. So this is a real proportion, but if we, you know, for example, if we want to, if we want the semantic model to win, we can, you know, manipulate the uh, proportion and then we can see, uh, uh, you know, now semantic cell can perform better. So I'm not uh, recommend doing, it, doing so, but this is important to keep in mind. So yeah, I'm not saying that semantic search is you know completely useless in product search, but uh, and also I think this comparison is not still 
fair because the potential of distance retrieval models is not realized. Like, uh, you know, we can, with semantic search, we can easily incorporate multimodality, session information, and via preferences, but these features are not available in the data set, so I couldn't use it. So, but I believe that rather than you know, discussing whether lexical search can be replaced by semantic search, uh, it's more productive to you know, discuss how to use them together to improve the overall performance. So next, let me talk about um, integration of semantic search. So, well, I don't like to use the term uh, hybrid search because the definition is ambiguous, but what I want to do is to utilize uh, embeddings to incorporate some uh, semantic meaning in the current system. And, and I think uh, there are several ways, and the first option is um, phase one relanking, where we compute a uh, semantic score and uh, put it into the current uh, relevance function. And the second option is to uh, retrieve items from both systems and show it uh, separately. And the, the third option is uh, lang fusion. And for the first one, we compute the semantic score, uh, size similarity on each shared, so to help overcome the limitation of lexical search that the, it does just count the number of words. Um, also, this approach doesn't require uh, building NN, so it's uh, much faster than uh, semantic search. So we, we still need to uh, you know, store back the button. You know, uh, essentially, uh, this is an elastic search query, and the risk score query is uh, executed on each shard, and that's it. So it's an easy way to incorporate semantic matching signals. And the second one is uh, supply UI components, so make you know, two lexical and the semantic uh, search requests and then display resulting different UI sections like YouTube. It shows um, regular search results and also uh, previously watched videos and uh, uh, videos from uh, new channels and so on. So yeah, it makes sense if contents are you know, uh, completely different. And also it adds uh, diversity to steps while you know, the mainstream search results uh, remain unchanged. So low risk, uh, but limited gain. And also, uh, I feel that having many options uh, could increase uh, users' cognitive load. So that's why I initially believe that the Lang fusion is more ideal. So the rational is, so for any information retrieval systems, uh, it sh they should follow the principle that the items are sorted by their utility. So if we have multiple systems and the cherry pick best result from you know, different sources and combine them into a single list, the overall relevance should, should increase. If that makes sense, yeah. And also, it requires low cognitive load compared to the uh, previous approach because you just need to consume uh, items from the top. And also, recall issues is at least uh, unlike the uh, first approach. So now, so it depends on the uh, implementation of a search engine, but uh, on uh, Elasticsearch and uh, uh, OpenSearch, uh, Lang Fusion is executed on a coordinating node. But so. We you know, send two requests internally, uh, two requests are made, and then uh, two lists are merged in some way. But how? So it's a bit challenging problem because you know, we can't say, so items are scored on a different scale, like a product A got the 100 score from lexical search, and the product B got the 0 0.9 score from semantic search. But you know, we can't say which is better, but the depending on which algorithm we apply, the final results completely differ. So, yeah, at the first glance, it looks um, a bit complicated, but actually, it can be decomposed into three simple steps. Like, first, we uh, normalize scores because, you know, lexical like search scores are unbounded. So, we apply something like, you know, recipe rank or uh, theoretical min max or border count or whatever. And then, you know, the score to ensure that the scores are in within a certain range. And then we apply some weight to, so that the way, uh, you know, rank fusion can be formulated as a combinatorial, a convex combinatorial optimization. Well, where we can, you know, use our hypothesis or assumption, like, you know, lexical search can perform better in uh, product search. In that case, we can put more importance on lexical search. And then we finally combine uh, two different results, result sets. And typically, some function is employed. So here is the result. So when rank fusion is applied, MDCG significantly improved, while also 
you can see that the precision also dropped uh, significantly. Oh, by the way, alpha is uh, fine tuned in advance. So, one way, so low precision is not acceptable. So, one way to mitigate this issue is to uh, literally a small number of uh, semantically matching items from the search system. And uh, yeah, there are some discussions about um, which lang fusion function we should apply, but for me, it's not a big deal. So what's important is uh, weight alpha. So you can see that the uh, I so the figure shows how NDC changes with different alpha with different methods, but peak performance is almost the same if alpha is fine tuned. And uh, yeah, alpha is important. Also, one more thing to consider is how to combine them. So which math function we use. So if we use some function, which means that uh, you know if everyone says you know, it's relevant, it should be more relevant. But this has a um, limitation. So yeah, this is, so the figure visualizes the score distribution, and the x-axis shows lexical score, and the y-axis shows the semantic score. And you can see um, sleek loops, and the, uh, the majority is found in both such systems. And if we apply some function, what happens is that there's some, some function selects items from top flight, so, which means that the, you know, mediocre items can be prioritized rather than you know, perfectly semantically matching items. So this is a problem. So, yeah, what we can do is rather than you know, uh, executing lang, fun, uh, lang fusion function within the search engine, it might be better to you know, uh, make two such requests in independently and create a global candidate set and apply the global Lanka to overcome this limitation. Okay, so uh, let me talk about uh, development. So yeah, this is the simplified uh, system overview. So to execute um, semantic search, we need a um, data set for training and evaluation, and also a service that um, encodes uh, documents and uh, queries. And also we need a um, search engine to perform um, NNN. So um, typically, such logs are used for training relankers, but uh, the problem is that the such logs are biased towards the current system, the current system in Let's Go Search. So if you look at the search logs, it's, uh, you know, they are almost boring examples emphasizing, you know, Let's Go matching signals. So the problem is that uh, if we use this for evaluation, the baseline always wins because semantic search, semantic search systems are not made for lexically matching signals. So, so what we want is, uh, false, negatives, false negatives in the table that, you know, the item is uh, relevant, but the, the current search system can't retrieve. So how can we obtain those labels? So of course we can hire annotators and ask uh, whether an item is retrieved or not, but it's challenging because, uh, you know, relevance judgment is subjective. And uh, to align the understanding between annotators, Google, Google has maintaining uh, 170 pages of guidelines for annotators. And when, so sometimes we discuss this, and uh, if I'm asked, I always uh, say, do you want to maintain th this future gu guideline? So, oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting, <laughs> so I'm suggesting, but uh, you know, um, now, but luckily we have another approach, Ellen as a judge. So Microsoft has been, um, using LLMs for annotation tasks. And they reported that the LLM labelers can do better on this task than human labelers for the fraction of, of the cost. So yeah, it, it makes sense that we are actually using LLMs for annotation tasks in, in medically. But you know, devising a data set is still important and they call the uh, you know, importance of the proportion. If we, you know, it's uh, imbalanced, you know, semantic search can win or you know, lexical search can win, so it's a quite bit challenging. So, but you know, this is the overview of uh, the system obtaining labels. So we have uh, F, B, false positives and the true positives in such looks, and the other items are first considered true negatives. But you know, in this set, we have some uh, potentially relevant items. So we uh, first apply um, semantic search to the set to get candidate, and then apply LLM to uh, find truly relevant items. So this is the um, example labels generated by um, 
LLMs. So the, for the query, Amazon Fire Stick TV uh, LLM uh, can successfully uh, label them uh, successfully. So and also we've confirmed that the LLM's output has a high correlation with um, human labels. So um, we so we need to you know encode documents and the queries. So we first put an Onyx model into our indexing pipeline, but the uh, job became uh, seven times slower and which was not acceptable. So we developed a new service uh, using Triton, which is a, a NVIDIA server. Uh, now it, it's running those, on dozens of nodes with GPUs. And also we need a search engine. So this is also a difficult topic. So we are, our system is built on top of Elasticsearch, but uh, as you know, the performance of Elasticsearch is you know, improving, but there's still uh, there's a huge gap between um, different vector DBs. So, and also, offline evaluation for retrieval systems is costly because you know we need to learn all the systems in the figure. So, especially larger models incur higher costs, which slow down the iteration speed and uh, prevents us from getting rapid feedback. So. I'd recommend to start with a small model and validate as you know, small ideas and improve the model um, iteratively. So I'd like to yeah, discuss this most important topic. Let me check, I have um, six <laughs> minutes left. Uh, yeah, so return on investment is important. So the maintenance and the execution costs of semantic search are significantly high. While you know uh, semantic search may not be effective for all queries, so if we combine two different systems, that gain is here. So do you think it's huge or small? But well, we need to buy it. This, but the, the hot topic right now in the company is: can we simplify lexical search? So if we have you know semantic search systems, uh, by any chance, uh, don't we need you know query expansion, for example? Or another option is to reduce the cost of uh, semantic search. So otherwise, it doesn't make sense as it's quite expensive. So, you know, we are measuring the opportunity size of each approach for, you know, uh, well, different way of incorporating semantic signals. And also we are tracking, uh, you know, of course, uh, all, um, typical evaluation metrics. And uh, in addition to them, we need to also track the costs, like, uh, you know, latency, uh, throughput, uh, cost per uh, 1 million queries, GPU cost per month, and so on. But there are still many challenges, like how can we measure the opportunity size, or you know, how can we deal with the increased latency? And the significant one is the, uh, the recent worldwide um, GPU shortage. So what's the point if users don't want semantic search? So what's said is, you know, keyword search is something that all people do. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's true in product search, but I can see the you know trend, uh, you know, shifting the uh, shifting in query format from you know uh, keyword search to natural language like queries. And also in in the past, user interviews reveal that when users can't find appropriate items on that platform, they switch to Google. So, yeah, because I hate to say that, but the Google search is quite smart. So you know it highlights that the importance of investing in new technology to stay competitive. So I can't uh, you know, provide the um, definitive answer for these questions and challenges, but uh, you know, th that's why we need to keep um, exploring them. So yeah, summary, the semantic search is for product search. It's not a silver bullet or something that can replace lexical search. And the practical approach to semantic search is you know, uh, understand the user behavior, choose the right metrics, and uh, optimize the system while, you know, considering cost. And, uh, you know, this is nothing special. So this is what, you know, search engineers have been doing for a long time. So, which indicates that, the, you know, the basics are still important in the era of AI. And just as lexical search can't be replaced by, you know, um, semantic search, search engineers can be replaced by um, AI engineers for now. Uh, yeah, that's it from me. So yeah, if you have any opinions, uh, please uh, let me know. I don't have an English account, but I do speak English. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you, Kentaro, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, does anyone have any questions? We have a few minutes for Q&A. Thank you for your talk. <clears throat> I have a question about integrating additional features because in product search, it's not only like lexical and vector similarity, but there are probably like popularity, uh, profit for certain products and many more that normally you want to combine. So any insight on how, for example, you ended up including that in the yeah. picture? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there are many features to incorporate, and uh, for our platform, so unlike product search, uh, slurs are also individual users. So you know, if we if a buyer send a you know purchase request, the you know seller might not respond if you know the the user listed the item for long long time ago. So also in our system, for example, the uh, recency is quite important. But if we you know put too much importance on recency. Uh, you know, noisy items are uh, uh, appeared on top of su uh, subs, so this is uh, you know, one of the things we are dealing with. Have you considered learning to rank, for example? I'm oh, sorry. Learning to rank approaches. Oh yeah, of course. Oh uh, yeah. Also, uh, so I was talking about the retrieval side of our platform, and also my colleagues are going to present about our relanking models at the uh, main stage today at 2 p.m. So if you are interested, in, please join the session. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? OK, um, thanks not again, I'm Kentaro. Uh, of course, you can always connect with him outside of the room uh, for one-on-one -on -one chats, if you would like. And yet, now we have a short coffee break. Uh, so feel free to grab a coffee on the entry and let's see yourself again later. Thank you.